Now I had two different videos ready to go, but I decided at the last second that I think this will be easier for people to understand. So if you guys feel like this isn't enough detail or information, let me know and I'll do a part two to this video with more detail. Either way, there's gonna be more gameplay up on the channel at some point of both of these decks and you can come by my streams, ask questions, watch me play and learn more that way. But this should easily get you started if not already going in the right track. This video is explaining how to use the Russian American decks I built in the previous video, which you've haven't if you haven't watched that you need to so that is linked below also you're going to find it at the top of the screen there and again i built those decks in a way that will make you learn the game and how to play there are two milestones in each game setting up your front line and breaking through the enemy front line because really that is all that matters it's just that whenever you break through the enemy front line you just move up your front line so that is the only gameplay that you should be worried about but the entire time your priority will be to keep your units alive Live. even though there are no game modes that actually make kills matter there's like no destruction or anything like that and your units do re uh, your units do respawn it takes time for those units to get there so it ends up mattering quite a lot so something to keep in mind is that if you run into a fair fight then back up because you're not looking for a fair fight you're looking for an easy fight so that you can win as you play especially with these decks you will learn what units do what and what is a fair fight these decks have nothing but the tankiest and strongest units so chances are you will be okay but as you go pay attention to what markers pop up for the enemy units and try to remember that that is a very significant part of this game is understanding units identifying them and coming up with a plan to defeat them no matter what deck you use you will be looking to set up a front line off of the opener where you can get recon and aa set up to be able to see what the enemy player is doing pretty quickly you will be able to buy a couple units that you can then use to push into the enemy lines once you hit resistance with the units that you are pushing just fight until you feel like you're in danger of losing a unit then you smoke and back up and by back up i mean reverse first because armor matters if you have your front facing towards the enemy chances are you'll be able to take way more punishment than if you had your back to the enemy same thing with the side whenever you are moving your units try to zoom in and pay attention to what side is facing the enemy you always want your front facing the enemy after a fight or a scuffle whatever you want to call it resupply the units and then do it again it's very simple set up a front line with recon and aa by a breakthrough force attempt to break through if you don't then back up and resupply if you you do then move the front line with the recon in the AA up and then resupply wash rinse repeat never be obvious never keep units in the same place after they fight and always keep your units alive that's the name of the game there if you get pushed in a different part of your line then focus on that and take the units that you are going to use to push to defend otherwise just back up I'll keep saying that as the closer that you get to your spawn the further that they get from theirs so stick to that if you ever get in trouble just back up at all times try to keep about 400 points available in order to buy planes or helicopters that you can then use to quickly react to issues. Also, the more units that you have on the map, the less points you earn, so you want to try and keep it to a small amount of effective units as long as possible. You'll choose corners and edges of the map in order to help you understand what's in front of you because there's going to be the edge of the map on one side, so you're not gonna need to worry about that side. Also, try and pick a side close to a ground spawn if you can. Now, in terms of how to play each deck, we're gonna start with Russia. At the start of a game, buy a couple Derevitsias in the support tab and BRM in the recon tab pair them up one each then stop after you buy a mi 28n this will be your front line once you have 800 points buy an armada and start moving that to the front the brms and derivitsias have 57 millimeter cannons that will mince light vehicles infantry and helicopters if you run into tanks pop smoke and back up the mi 28 is your recon do not put it on the front line put it behind your front line you want to be able to see if the enemy is bringing in helicopters or anything like that close by. If you see some helicopters coming in for the enemy, but it's a bit farther away, you can take the Derevitsias, turn the radar on, and see if you can get line of sight on them by holding the Alt key. The shaded in areas are places that you can't see, and the open part of that circle is places that you can see. Chances are, if you move them into a field or onto a road, and the helicopters are on the other side of that field or down that road, you're going to be able to see them. That's stuff that you're just going to be able to learn over time. Now, in terms of where you're stopping these units, you're 
you're going to stop somewhere close to, but not on top of an objective and see what runs into you until you are ready to push up. It's fine to fight a little, just don't lose any units. And if you win, then move to avoid artillery and air. The vast majority of players immediately go to air or artillery the second they see a unit, especially if they lose a fight. If you see a couple of enemy units stacked up, then that's when you can use the 400 points that you saved to buy an SU-30 and drop a cab 1500 on them. What you do is you click the SU-30, then click the map where you want it to fly towards. Once it is out, you'll see the UI pop up on the right and you'll see your ammunition pop on the bottom. Click it on the right, hit the afterburner button in the bottom right, and then hit P. You'll see crosshairs over your cursor. Just click where you want that bomb to drop and the plane will automatically, with afterburners on, go to the closest location that it can go to to drop that bomb and drop the bomb. From that point, you watch the UI for the plane at the bottom. Once the bomb drops, you'll see it turn to zero. It'll go from one out of one to zero out of one. Once you see that zero pop up, immediately hit V and then B. V will drop the plane down to the ground and B will make it head home. That is the quickest hotkey segment that you can use to get it out of there as quickly as possible and as safely as possible. There's a lot of hotkeys that you can set up for this game, but those are default. I'll talk about the other ones later in a different video. This entire time, if you see a bunch of enemy planes, either wait or try to get into that fight with your SU-57s, it's up to you. This little situation that you're probably gonna find yourself in quite often at the beginning of the games is what we save points for at the beginning, it's for situations like this. The little nuances of whether you do or don't do something is what comes with time. Basically, I would say with anything with this deck, try and keep your units alive. That should be your priority. Keep your units alive, but try new things. So if you think you should get into a fight, do it. If you think you should call out a plane, do it. If you think you should use that plane to drop bombs, do it. If you think you should use that plane to fight another plane, do it. You will learn. And because of the way that this deck is built, it is the most efficient way to to learn with the best units available so you can take a beating. Now, once you have your units spread out, just wait until you can buy another BRM out of the recon tab, two T-15s from either the transport or the infantry tab. If, you, if you're not bringing infantry, then obviously it'll be cheaper. So I just go with the transport tab and a buck M3. So generally speaking, your units should be a couple of BRMs, a couple of Derivitsias, a Armada tank, a MI-28N, two T-15s and a buck M3. You will use Use the Armada and the two T-15s to push and probe forward with a BRM behind them close by. Keep the Buck M3 in the back and be ready to call in an SU-57 to support. There's a really good chance that when the enemy sees just even your Armada, let alone the Armada and the two T-15s, they will throw planes at them, which is actually kind of the point. Just keep moving and if you get in trouble, pop smoke and back up. If you get into a couple of fights, even if it looks like your units aren't hurt, still back up as what you're doing here is buying time and chances are some of those units either used up their APS or some ammunition you're going to want to resupply them also if you back them up then it's going to leave the enemy guessing where they are which is actually very useful especially if they called in helicopters or planes to come kill them because then you can use your Derevitsias your Cub M3 or your SU-57 if you want to call that out to kill whatever they bring so at that point is when you're going to want to bring up supplies to resupply your vehicles so whether you use a commas out of the support tab or helicopters whether it be the MI-26 or whatever you might have in the helicopter tab, bring up supplies with those units by clicking the transport, then clicking the amount of supplies that you want to bring up. Do not drop more than 3,000 supplies at a time. It will help you stop teammates from, st from stealing it if there's too much there, although they're probably going to do that anyway. And if it gets hit, the damage won't be too much. As time goes on, you will just try to build multiple little pushing forces, no more than three units each primarily. That's going to be your goal. That way, when one comes back to resupply, you can push another or push two at the same time on both flanks of an objective. So like what we've been doing before with the Armada and the two T-15s, instead of adding an Armada to that group, just build another group. So we have two little pushing forces that we can move back and forth. Each time you push, you need to focus on keeping your units alive. And remember, most players' first reaction is plane spam. So be ready to shoot down what they bring. Always keep recon and AA on your flanks and back up if you need to. Do not 
lose units. It doesn't matter if you almost killed something and you need to stay there just a little bit longer to make sure that you do kill it. If you think you might lose a unit, back up and resupply. If you're having trouble with planes, bring more Buck M3s and Tors. You'll only need a couple behind your lines. If they're really spamming planes, then try and time it so that your SU-57 is up when their planes come in to bomb so that you can be there to counter them. Also remember, if they can't see you, then they can't hit you. So back up quickly after a fight and don't sit in previous spots. Do not be obvious. And that goes for artillery as well, because if they can see you, they can hit you, they will shoot artillery at you. Chances are if somebody's plane spamming, they've probably got some artillery in the back there. And even if it's not that player on the other side, there's probably somebody on the other team who likes using artillery or bombs. And the second they see anything, they're going to hit it. If you lose units, don't worry, just back up and what you have, try to keep alive. Again, the closer that you are to your spawn, the further away that they are from theirs. I'll put up gameplay of this deck on its own soon, and you can come by my streams to ask for help in person. Whether I use this deck or another one, the concept still stays the same because it works. Have tanks, fight tanks, drop a cab 1500 on any enemy units or a clump of units that you're trying to move into to weaken them and try to snipe with the MI-28NM if you can. Those are the longest range ATGMs that you can get on a helicopter, and that's also where you'll learn what's going on with man pads and things like that that are built to be hidden and snipe helicopters. It's basically going to be the same story with the units with the US deck, but obviously it's not the same units and they do work differently, so we'll get to that now. Your starter should be two Cav Scouts in their Bradleys, a Lav AD, and a Shorad with your Super Cobra above. When you're on your way to the front line and then have 800 points saved up, buy a SEP V3. Then when you have the points, buy an ESV Bradley and a regular Bradley. This will all take some time. You're not gonna have the same amount of points when you buy this opener as you would with the Russian opener because these units are a bit more expensive. But either way, after you buy your opening units, just wait for those points to flow in. Like I said, once you have 800 points or about 800 points saved up, buy a set V3. Then when you have more points, buy an ESV Bradley and a regular Bradley. But always keep a few hundred points around so that you can buy a Super Hornet if you need to or a F-35. Your front line should consist again of Recon and AA between your Cav Scouts, Recon Bradleys, Shore Ads, and Lav Ads. If you see helicopter is approaching you, turn the radar on for your Shorad. It's this button on the bottom right. That's going to be doing pretty well at sniping enemy helicopters. Just turn it, the radar off after you shoot those helicopters. Both the Recon Cav Scouts and the Recon Bradleys are Recon units, so you can spread them out a bit evenly. You don't need to stack them on top of each other. Your pushing force is going to be the SEP V3, the ESV Bradley, and the regular Bradley. Grab the closest Recon Bradley and keep it close behind them when you decide to push. And then have the Super for Cobras somewhat close as well to help spot. And if, if a plane comes in, then it can help shoot sidewinders at it and help shoot it down. But keep it further back behind your units that you are pushing. So in case they have AA, it doesn't get shot down. The distances that you're going to need to worry about for AA is just something that you're going to have to learn over time. The process is exactly the same. Just push until you hit something, fight a little bit, maybe get a couple of kills, then smoke and fall back to resupply. Always keep your front facing the enemy if you can help it. Do not lose any units and buy time until you can buy more pushing units. If planes are a problem, them, use more lav ads and patriots. If you're going to call in a patriot, keep the radar on for any of the shore ads that you call in, because if they call in a seed plane, then they're going to be able to kill the patriots. But if your Bradleys are in front of the patriots, which they should be, they will go after the Bradleys and waste ammunition on those. And the patriots will likely either kill or heavily hurt the planes that come in. You can also try to keep a super hornet up, but watch out for the fuel with the super hornet. If you know there's a group of enemies close by, drop a couple of J cells on them from the F-35 before before you push into them. If you're having trouble seeing them, start bringing your recon units closer in with the fight or choose another direction to push. With both decks, you take ground, but don't stop moving. Whenever you shoot or win a fight, it doesn't matter. And anytime you're in a fight for more than just a few seconds, expect artillery or planes with bombs to be coming at you, always. Everybody uses planes as a crutch. In this case, you want them to do that, which they are going to, but when the plane gets there, your units are either not going to be spotted or they won't be where they last saw them. And then that's when you jump on them with your AA or the planes that you bring in to go and counter them. Once you shoot down a plane, you're probably not going to need to worry about it for another five or so minutes. After you shoot them down a couple of times, and especially if they're not effective, like if they don't get any kills themselves, they'll probably stop trying. 
if you know a unit did not shoot yet and it's either getting hit by artillery or it dies, then you either didn't have it in a tree line in cover or behind a building for cover and a recon unit from the other player could see it. So it hit it with artillery or killed it. So that means wherever that unit died, somewhere close by, there's some sneaky recon. So you need to watch out for that. The thing that's good about these pushing forces that we're using with whether it be the Armadas and the T-15s or the Septs and the Bradleys are that they can take a beating and they have APS. So if you think recon is somewhere just push into it and go find it but again if you run into a lot of resistance smoke and back up playing these decks this way will force you to learn the basic mechanics of the game and how to identify units which is the vast majority of this game then that gives you a foundation to build off of so don't expect to start winning every game but you will be doing much better than people who play differently i am very confident in that stay tuned for more gameplay videos i'll post some raw gameplay of these decks in the future along with more tutorials and decks ask any questions that you might have here or come by a stream if you need some more help. If you make any changes to this, let me know how that works for you. Again, by leaving a comment or coming by one of the streams. Otherwise, to support what I do, check out my Patreon linked below. I just made it so there's nobody on it, but this is where I would thank the people who are in it in the future. Otherwise, thank you very much for watching and I hope you have a nice day. See you guys.